I would like to invite Stephen, Father Bartholomew, Sister Ngechi, and Mora. I say my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you, all our speakers that came and all the insight we received. Thank you, um, our sisters here, fathers, ladies and gentlemen. So as we draw this enlightening conference to a close, we not only have celebrated the remarkable journey of the Africa Faith and Justice Network, but we have also to look forward to the continuing crafting the path which will help us to enter the promised land as promised us by the God of our ancestors. For four decades, AFJN has been at the forefront addressing critical issues impacting Africa, tirelessly working to uplift communities and advocate for justice and peace. The wisdom and insights shared by our esteemed AFJN elders have been invaluable, offering us a glimpse into the passionate dedication that has driven this organization forward, and as well as offering us advice to tap into as we face the emerging future of AFJN. Our discussions on US-Africa relations have shed light on the evolving dynamics that shape this crucial partnership. Aligning with African aspirations is not merely an option, but a moral imperative. Fair trade, technology transfer, innovation, and capacity building stand as pillars of a mutually beneficial relationship. Upholding governance, human rights, and anti-corruption efforts must remain at the forefront of our collective efforts. The highlights from the field segment has been a vivid reminder of the tangible impact that AFGEN in collaboration with our African partners has had in transforming lives and minds. From Ghana to Nigeria to Uganda and other African countries, the stories of structural change and community empowerment serve as beacons of hope, reminding us that change is possible and progress is achievable. Today marks a historic day as we embark on a significant journey. The launch of our capital campaign to secure funding for a new vision that will provide our organization with an African house, a reference point and a dedicated work, workspace for our ministry. As we extend our deepest gratitude to the poor handmaids of Jesus Christ, whom I belong to, proudly saying that we have launched a capital campaign with $40,000. Mm. Oh, yeah, dear. Achieving this ambitious goal will, will require the collective eff effort of our entire community. Therefore, we wholeheartedly invite you to join us in this endeavor. All of us, Africa diaspora, We've launched into what we call an outreach program. And each and every one of you Africans sitting in this room, bring your friends, come with us, and we will make a difference for the new Africa. Therefore, we invite you to join us. Your support will be instrumental in turning this vision into a reality. Today, we can create a space that will empower us to continue our vital work for years to come. We extend our heartfelt thanks to all our organizational members whose prayers and unwavering financial support have been the steadfast pillars upholding this vital social justice ministry within our Catholic Church. Your dedication has been the bedrock upon which we have stood, serving our sisters and brothers in Africa. 
we are equally indebted to our individual members and the generous donors who have rallied behind this noble cause. Your collective efforts have been a ray of hope, radiating light into the lives of those we serve. A special tribute is owed to those who have not only recognized the value of this ministry, but have also provided funds to move it forward. Beginning with our esteemed institutional members, your trust and partnership have propelled our programs in Africa to greater heights. We thank the Conrad Hilton Fund for Sisters. Your invaluable support has strengthened our women empowerment program. To rask up, we express our deepest gratitude for funding our just governance program, championing a more equitable Africa. Lastly, we pay our homage to the visionary founding members of AFD. This foresight paved the way for an organization that has made an indelible mark. To every board member, both, both past and present, your unwavering commitment has been the guiding force staring AFJ and through the years. And to every staff member, past and present, your tireless contributions have been the driving force behind our successes. To all those who have served AFJN and have brought to God, we give them thanks. We have some silence for them. As we leave this conference, let us carry with us the wisdom and inspiration we have gained from listening to each and every one of us. Let us be champions for Africa, advocating for a future where peace, justice, and prosperity flourish. Together we stand as a formidable force for good, working towards a brighter, more just, future for Africa and nurturing stronger bonds between the United States and the continent. And also using our voices as individuals and civil societies to uphold African leaders to be accountable. Thank you for all you have done Thank you for being part of this milestone celebration. Together, let us write the next chapter of AFJN's impactful journey. We all have responsibility. We cannot speak about the US-Africa relationship and we're not in the midst of it. Each and every one of us African, we have a role to play. So we look forward to another 40 years of unwavering commitment to the well-being of Africans and the advancement of US-Africa relations. Safe travels and may the God of African ancestors bless you all. I'm gonna invite Ms. Jemima Anden so that we can come briefly talk about the capital campaign and let me just give a brief background. If you have this little leaflet, which I put together last, it's, it's very organic in the sense that I did it. It's not done by my communications. You know, I was like, my heart is so much into this that I decided to spend some time learning Canva to do something, which doesn't look very good, but my heart is there. I want to talk about, you know, when I joined AFJN as the executive director, um, everything has been going well for AFGN in terms of dedication, meeting our mission, um, making the change that we really need to make in Africa. Um, the way AFGN has been described, it's a small group that does large things. Now, you will never see on our website, you will never understand what we do by looking at our website until you come and listen to us as you have today. One of the things that my vision for this organization, which is doing so well here in Washington, D.C., is to focus on the future. No matter how much past we have in terms of richness, 
if we cannot maintain that for the future, that history would be erased. So the Africa Faith and Justice Network has embarked on a very important capital campaign in terms of actually getting a building for itself. Now, why is this important? This is different from getting a mortgage and then paying every year and not sure where the next pay is gonna come from. We have decided on embarking on actually getting our own structure that serves more than just uh, as, a, as a building for office, but for various things that AFGN has done over the years. If you look at the leaflet that I have passed to you, it's very summarized in terms of some of the things that we want to achieve. So it's called the Africa House, and it's going to be based in Washington, D.C. All of the work that you see, we have done. That house is going to serve the purpose for the next generation of people who will serve this organization long after I'm gone. We have embarked on raising funds effective this night, actually effective a couple of months ago because we already have a seed money to raise enough money to build or to own a house, not in, not in Virginia, not in Maryland, but in Washington, D.C., where the power lies. As somebody said today, if you're not on the table, you don't get to make the decision. We want, we want to be where everybody else is so that we, our voice can be heard. So therefore, we have embarked on this, on building or owning or constructing a house called the Africa House, which is going to go beyond just Africa Faith and Justice Network, but to serve all other things African. So it's going to be, um, we, have, we are going to have a four-phase approach to this. The first year, which is this year, is what I call the Laying the Foundation. The laying the foundation is the first year of the campaign which will focus on laying the foundation for the project. It will include conducting a feasibility study to identify potential locations of the AFGN office headquarters, assessing the financial resources needed to acquire the, and maintain the property, and engaging stakeholders to build support for the program. And then there will be the second year, which my board member, will help me talk about. So the second year of this campaign would be what we call the breaking ground. The second year of the campaign will focus on securing a property for AFJN's headquarters and breaking ground on construction. This will require significant fundraising efforts, grant applications, and partnerships with donors and community organizations. So once we are done, then we build up. Now, that will be year three. That will be um, 2025. Year three will be the campaign will focus on constructing the actual headquarters and creating a space that reflects the organization's values and mission. It will include designing and building a sustainable and energy efficient building, incorporating African art and culture into the design and creating the meeting spaces and offices for both staff and our volunteers, as well as our interns. In year four will be when we expand our impact. The fourth year of the campaign will focus on expanding AFJN's impact through increased outreach and programming. This will include launching new advocacy campaigns, partnering with more grassroots organizations in Africa and building partnerships with universities and research institu institutes um, to advance knowledge and understanding of African issues. Now, once we are done with that, be, the campaign will focus on securing the legacy of AFGN and ensuring the sustainability of the organization for years to come, including creating, creating an endowment for years to come, including creating an endowment to support the organization's operations and programming developing a succession plan for leadership and building partnerships with other organizations to continue the work of AFGM beyond its headquarters. Overall, the building, the building Adjust Africa, securing legacy of AFJN's campaign will be a transform transformative effort that will enable AFJN to expand its impact and continue to work towards a just and equitable Africa. By building a sustainable, 
and permanent headquarters, AFJN will have a home to inspire and engage future generations of African activists, leaders, and advocates. So ladies and gentlemen, tonight, we are very excited that you have joined us and we are starting this new journey of actually creating a permanent, sustainable African advocacy right here in Washington, D.C. When I introduced this to the board, they were so excited that they thought my ambition was very small. They even asked me to ask for more money. And they didn't stop there. Before I launched the campaign, one of my board members, who is the chair, went to a congregation and they donated $40,000 immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up to Sister Nkechi. Where is Sister Nkechi? Thank you. Now, our organizational members are very generous. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been here for 40 years. They have done everything from sustaining program, sustaining the office, sustaining everything we stand for. Um, they are not rich, and they go all over and above to make sure that this organization continues because they trust, they believe in the value system. So, therefore, I'm asking you today, as we have passed on these my very amateur um, paper, that you look at it, and if you can, whether within your network, your friends, your families, endowments, or anything, including if you have some retirement fund or something that you think can help Africa, there's no better way to do that than to really put it in something that focuses on the structure. Our argument, our theory of change is focusing on the structure that keep people in poverty. We believe when you empower people, they can hold their governments responsible. We know that because we have seen that happen in Cameroon. We have seen that happen in Nigeria. I saw that happen in Ghana. I know it will happen. And therefore, the most sustainable thing to do is to support an organization that really goes to the heart of the problem. So with that in mind, um, we have passed on this, and please feel free, myself, my colleagues will be around here, and it's, I think it's now an opportunity to introduce them to you. You'll be surprised to know that the African Faith and Justice Network, with all the things we do, there are only a few people who actually do this every day, besides the goodwill of the board members and our organizational members. So it is now my privilege to, let, to, to invite those members to just stand up. And I tell you about the good work that they have done. I start with uh, Mr. Ntama Bahati, who is right there. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Bahati. Mr. Bahati is from Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC. He is the policy analyst, and I call him the sage of AF AFGN. He has been with AFGN since 2007. And he has been the one who is always at Congress, pushing those congressmen to get the laws, to get the things done for Africa. If there's any one person you want to ask about reservoir for AFGN, there's no other person who has served AFGN much longer, much deeper, with so much love and so much care, and he's looking younger every day, than Mr. Ntama Bahati. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. I want to invite um, Sister Eukaria Madweke, who was actually sitting here. Sister Eukaria. Sister Eukaria, who is a very humble person. You know, I never knew the gravity of the work that she does until I was with her two weeks ago in Uganda. And I saw how much work she does in all those places, you know, pulling the levers together, bringing all those political leaders, so local leaders, religious people on the ground, sit on the same place and listen to each other. She's very feisty. Sister Yukiria is a women's empowerment coordinator. So she, con she works with all the sisters in Africa and making sure that they are empowered to know what we do and providing the skills for them and they go out there and pass on the skills to other people. She is a graduate from Howard. She is a PhD, of course, but she doesn't like to talk about it. Very intelligent. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Sister Inc. Inc. 
And now I introduce to you the face of AFJ. And so if you've been sending emails and getting them back, and in five seconds, there's somebody who has been doing that. And as I speak to you, I'm pretty sure she's somewhere sending emails on behalf of AFGN. Um, Lydia Andrews. All right. Hello. Lydia is our communications and our operations director. Um, all those nice um, booklets that you see, the communications, some of those press releases that you think actually were written by me, she goes through them and makes sure that the T's are correct and the I's are. Lydia is a very meticulous worker. She makes sure everything that comes out of AFJ has to be right. She spends a lot of time doing that. She's very dedicated to this mission. And um, we're very, very proud of her and the work she has done. And she, all of these people who are standing here, they do this work with their hearts. I know this because I've worked with them. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for the hard work you have done and you continue to do. I mean, all of you have been here before me, so I learn a lot from them, even though sometimes I seem to be getting the praise, but it really goes to them, and that's a fact. So please give them a big hand and thank them so much for the work they have done. Thank you, Bahati. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you. Oh, and then finally, I'm going to introduce Miss Kelly, who has joined us recently as our AFGN volunteer. You see, the thing is, it's hard to find them because people are walking, you know, even while we're here having fun drinking, right? Come over, Kelly. Come over. <laughs> Kelly joined AFJ, I think, about a month and a half ago. She's going to be with us for, I mean, you know, sometimes they say we're going to be with you for one year or 10 months, and then they end up for the next 15 years. That's what I found out, you know. So I've seen that many of our volunteers, they just keep working with us. So Kelly has worked with AFG and, and she was actually very instrumental in putting all of this together and working over and above as a volunteer. Thank you so much, Miss Kelly. Thank you, um, all of you. I don't know if anybody wants to say thank you. Otherwise, thank you and God bless you. All right, thanks. So please don't forget when you have your leaflets and if you want to reach out to me and let me know if you have a million dollars, we'll be happy to get that. Thanks. I'd like to um, take a few moments to acknowledge the planning committee for this 40th anniversary. I, um, well, I am the chair of the planning committee from the board but I would like to say that majority of the work was done by Steve and his team. I was there when he needed me though. Uh, we held meetings when we had to, but most of the, the heavy lifting was done by Steve, Lydia, Bahati, and everyone else in the office. So I'd like to use the, this opportunity to just say a big thank you to them for tirelessly working towards this occasion. And it's been a great one. It's been a successful one. So thank you so much for the team, to the team.